Salam. This is Khalid Faris Al Ali. This video is a part of Spine Surgical Anatomy series, and we're talking about C1 surgical anatomy. C1, also known as Atlas, is the first cervical vertebra of the C7 vertebrae. It's a typical vertebra with C2 and C7. There are three distinct features of C1. It is a ring-like, has no body, and has large paired lateral mass. From superior view, you can see anteriorly the anterior arch, posteriorly the posterior arch. Both arches are connected laterally with paired lateral mass. The most anterior part of the anterior arch is called anterior tubercle, and in the posterior arch, it's called posterior tubercle. Superior articular process that articulate with occipital condyles are also seen in the top of lateral masses. Lateral to the lateral masses are transverse foramen, where vertebral artery pass, and lateral to them are transverse processes. In the middle of C1, a large canal called spinal canal, where C2 odontoid process and spinal cord pass. From anterior view, in the center of the anterior arch, the anterior tubercle is seen. Laterally, the transverse process are seen, and between it and the anterior arch, the two lateral masses. From the posterior view, at the top of the lateral masses, superior articular surface and inferiorly, the inferior articular process that articulate with superior articular process of C2. In the middle of the posterior arch is posterior tubercle. Notice there is no lamina in C1, and that's a unique feature of C1. From the lateral view, can you mention the same structures? One of the most important structures that runs near C1 is vertebral artery. Knowing its relation to is crucial in exposing C1 surgically. Vertebral artery after exiting C1 transverse foramen runs on the top of C1 lateral, laterally, a groove called vertebral artery groove. The vertebral artery is typically divided into four segments. V1, also known as a pre-foraminal segment, is the vertebral artery from its origin to the transverse foramen of C6. V2, also known as foramen segment, where it's a vertebral artery from transverse foramen of C6 to the transverse foramen of C2. V3, also known as Atlantic or extradural or extraspinal segment, starts from C2, where the artery loops and turns laterally to ascend into the transverse foramen, continue through C1 to pierce the dura. And last part is V4, also known as intradural or intracranial segment. It's the vertebral artery from the dura at the lateral edge of posterior atlanto-occipital membrane to their confluence of medulla to form basilar artery. This shows the V3 part of the vertebral artery. As we mentioned, starts from C2, where the artery loops and turn laterally to ascend into the transverse foramen, continues through C1 to pierce the dura. The distance between C1 midline posteriorly and vertebral artery laterally is approximately 15 mm. This is important to know when exposing C1 and posterior approach. When discussing C1 anatomy, C2 should be also mentioned. They both form atlantoaxial segment. C2 odontoid process pass through C1 spinal canal. They both connected with several ligaments called atlantoaxial ligaments. We can look at into these ligaments from different views. An anterior view. Anterior longitudinal ligament in the midline, 
It runs along the anterior surface of vertebral body from C1 to sacrum, superiorly seen the atlanto-occipital capsule joint, which is a joint between occipital condyles and superior articular facets of C1. Atlanto-axial capsule joint is a paired joint between superior articular facet of C2 and inferior articular facet of C1. In the posterior C1, C2 view, the tectorial membrane is seen and attached to the posterior part of the clivus and the posterior aspect of C2 body. It continues at posterior longitudinal ligament from the posterior aspect body of C2 inferiorly to the sacrum. In this illustration, the dotted line is at the posterior aspect of base of C2 body where tectorial membrane ends and posterior longitudinal ligament starts. This view after removing the tectorial membrane, the alar ligament is seen laterally to the odontoid. It extends from the odontoid to the lateral margin of the foramen magnum. The crociate ligament, also known as a cruciform ligament, is the most important ligament of C1-C2 complex. It holds the posterior odontoid of C2 in articulation at the median atlantoaxial joint. It consists of two parts. One, transverse band, also known as the transverse atlantic or atlanto, atlantal ligament. It attaches to a small tubercle on the medial cortex of C1. Lateral masses on both sides, anterior to the tectorial membrane and dura. Second part is longitudinal band, which also divided into ascending and descending bands attached to the body of C2 to the clivus and forming magnum in the midline, lying between apical ligament and tectorial membrane. We will discuss more of the surgical anatomy through the following case. This patient is a 27 years old male involved in motor vehicle crash. He presented with a neck pain but a neurologically intact C2 CT Cervical spine showed type 2 odontoid fracture with MRI confirmed transverse Atlantic ligament disruption, which is a clear indication for C1 C2 fixation. Let's say we are going to do C1 C2 fixation. Of course, we wish the spine to look like that intraoperatively, but there are a few anatomical structures to know. The atlanto-occipital membrane is a thin membrane that joins the upper border of the anterior arch of C1 to the anterior inferior surface of the foramen magnum. It needs to be exposed if C1 laminectomy is planned. V3 segment of vertebral artery, and we talked about it before. If planning C1 lateral mass screws, anatomical structure at the C1-C2 joint needed to be known. First is C2 nerve root, which is a sensory nerve root that can be sacrificed if needed. It is covered by a venous plexus that can cause bleeding when exposing C1 lateral mass screw entry point. For the entry point of C1 lateral mass, there are two common entry points. Goal point at the C1 lateral mass from the lateral medial is at the midpoint and from the superior inferior is as one to two millimeter above the C1, C2 joint. The screw's trajectory usually 15 degree medial and 15 degree cranial towards the anterior tubercle. The second point is by tan at C1 posterior arch from lateral medial is a 19 millimeter from the lateral border and from the superior inferior is a 2 mm above C1, C2 joint. The screw trajectory is 0 degree mediolateral and 5 degree cranial. This illustrates the two points of C1 lateral mass screws, gall in the lateral mass and tam at the edge of the posterior ring just above the lateral mass. To choose the appropriate entry point, Two vertebral artery anomalies need to be known and by doing a CT angiogram. First one is C1 arcuate foramen 
which is known as C1 Ponticulus Posticus. It's a bony bridge on the C1 that covers the groove from the vertebral artery. It is found in 3 to 15 percent of the patients. Placing a lateral mask screw by tan entry can cause vertebral artery injury. The second vertebral artery anomaly is when in V3 segment of vertebral artery passes below the C1 posterior arch. Goal entry point should be avoided. So in summary, we have two entry points for the lateral mass and two vertebral artery anomalies to remember. Let's look at the C1 anatomy from surgical point of view. The following will be left-sided posterior exposure of C1. Patient is positioned prone and his head is fixed with the head clamps with the neck flexion to open the occipital C1 and the C1, C2 segment. If we zoom in, we can see the posterior part of the cervical spine, but we agree before that the patient are not consist of bone only. To dissect, you will encounter first skin, then cervical fascia covering the trapezius muscle. When dissecting the posterior cervical, the incision is midline through a vascular plane of nuchal ligament. The posterior cervical muscle are not usually seen. If trapezius muscle is removed, the muscle, the first muscle seen is semispinalis capitis, which originate from superior articular process of C4 to C7 transverse process of T1, T6 and insert between superior and inferior nuchal lines of occipital bone. Below this is a, a splenius muscle which originates from nuchal ligament and the spinous process of C3, T3 vertebrae and inserts into mastoid process of temporal bone, lateral one third of the superior nuchal line of occipital bone. After removing semispinalis muscle, suboccipital triangle is seen these muscles are rectus posterior minor capitis, rectus posterior major capitis, and oblique inferior capitis muscles. If planning C1 lateral mass screws, anatomical structure of C1 C2 joints needed to be known as we mentioned before. The location of C2 nerve root and V3 vertebral artery segment. The nerve root is covered by venous plexus that can cause a bleeding when exposing C1 lateral mass if goal entry point is chosen. After dissecting the venous plexus, the nerve root is retracted caudally to locate the entry uh, point. That's a C1 surgical anatomy. Thank you very much. I'm Khalid Faris Al-Ali.